Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to focus on five very easy ways to form and play not only seventh chords but far beyond seventh chords. The ninth extensions, the eleventh extensions, and the thirteenth extensions. What we tend to call as jazz harmony or jazz tensions, or just chord extensions. So to start off, the assumption is you know what a major chord is, a minor chord is. Maybe also a diminished chord, not really an augmented chord, but that would also help. Maybe a suspended chord or two. There we go, and maybe a few things on intervals, like the fifth interval, the minor third, major third, flat two, and so on. So maybe you'd like to also watch a few videos, which we leave in the description, if you're not sure to form the basics, like triads, intervals, and so on. But if you're okay with major and minor chords, just a few basic intervals, maybe the major scale. I think this lesson will be very much for you. And maybe you're like me in the sense that when I started being presented with these symbols, like play me a G ninth sharp eleven, it was absolute. madness it was really confusing and uh, i knew g major i maybe i maybe i knew g 7th or um, after the after a little bit of struggle g minor 7th but remembering something like that you know minor 11th what is this 9 11 and 13 in the first place why do you have such numbers a scale just has seven notes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 why do we even need the 9 11 and 13 to begin with so we'll first of all dive into some theory what those intervals are what these extensions are and what flavor they end up bringing and then instead of forming it in the thirds way 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 13 we are not going to do that at all instead we are going to look at a few sort of cheat codes if you will to form these chords and not not just cheat codes to form it inevitably cheat codes to make them sound very unique in the first place so we borrow some ideas from the guitar uh, the banjo and a few other stringed instruments which also use these concepts so before we get to the approaches to form these chords let's just look at the essential theory of forming extensions or uh, uh, jazz tensions so if we take a c root if ever we want to call something a 9 11 or a 13 there will definitely need to be a 7th degree in there so we have two kinds of 7ths in music you have a major 7th and a minor 7th also known as the dominant 7th so if you take a major 7th now and alongside that you can have a major 3rd you can even have a minor 3rd so you could have a major 3rd with a major 7th that would be called as a major 7th especially if you add that g in there so the g ends up becoming a bit redundant because the flavor is already created the major 7th vibe is already there this is your minor major 7th vibe which is a root minor 3rd and a continuing major 7th and this is a very beautiful augmented 5th very interesting interval you could also bring in your 5th your normal perfect 5th that's your minor major 7th and then if you take your um flat 7 what are the the chords which can be formed c dominant 7th and c minor 7th okay so it's major 7th minor major 7th dominant 7th minor 7th and then if you start messing with the 5 you'll get a minor 7th flat 5 also known as a half diminished chord and if you mess with the uh 5 to become a 4 you can then do a c7 sus4 or c major 7 sus4 okay you can even then double flat the 7 to get a diminished 7th sound okay so we have done sevens and triads in a very detailed set of videos we leave you a few videos in the description i'll journey forward now to the 9th 11th and 13th so if you want to call something a 9 11 or a 13 you should have a 7th in the chord So let's say we have the dominant seventh. So D would end up being the ninth. Now, if you do not have the dominant seventh, 
it would just be called as c major add 9 or c major add 2 also see is this an add chord we use the word add generally when there's no 7 if there is a 7 This now performs the function of a nine, just to distinguish it from a two. So if we call it two, there won't there won't be a seven. Add nine, we, or we use the word add. You can say add nine or add two. Now with the seven, you can call this a C ninth, not C seven. Add nine that becomes redundant. We just say C ninth. So nine is same as two. alongside the 7 some people say 9 is the same as 2 played up the octave but i think a better way the way i look at it is from a sound perspective the entire chord hitting you feels like a 9th when there's already a 7 vibe so you can even do a c major 9th there we go that's a major 7th with a 9th so we call that c major 9th that's a c normal 9th or just c 9th so that's your 9 you can also flatten or sharpen the 9 so you can have a c7 flat 9 you can have a c7 sharp 9 sharp 9 will be an augmented second or a raised 9 used a lot by by guitar players good voicing for a guitar the shape is easy to form um then the flat 9 is a very diminished seventh kind of used a lot in the harmonic minor while the normal 9 so a uh, 9 very grand flat 9 very diminished sounding That's your sharp nine, very jazzy, and you can use it also in a rock context to add that chaos. So that's your nine, and somehow the flat nine and the sharp nine don't work at at all with the major seventh. Sounds a bit weird to me. That's nice. So. Yeah, but it's more common to use the flat nine and the sharp nine with a flat seven. The normal nine though can be used with a major seventh. Okay, and then coming to the eleventh interval. Eleventh is nothing but a perfect fourth played up uh, an octave or alongside the seventh interval. So, so that's your normal eleven. That's your sharp eleven. The context is with the flat seven. Sharp eleven sound great even with a major seven. That's a sharp eleven with a major seventh bass, and then finally your thirteen will be a six played up the octave or alongside the flat seven. you can also flat the 13 you we also call this a very augmented seventh kind of sound or you can call this as a c seventh sharp 5 or else a c 13th so you need that 13th that a in there or else a sharp or a flat 13 rather flat 13 or a sharp 5 You can also have a C7 flat 5 by the way. But that could also be referred to as a C7 sharp 11. Okay? So the names kind of are interchangeable so to speak. Sharp 11, sharp 4, augmented 4th, diminished 5th is the same as 5 flat, you know. A flat 13 is the same as augmented 5th or sharp 5. so you get the idea so you have the 9 flat 9 sharp 9 then you have your 11 11 sharp and you have your 13 and 13 flat you may be arguing why not 13 sharp because 13 sharp will be the repetition of the flat 7 so we don't need that and then you may be arguing why not the 11 flat well because 
the 11 flat ends up becoming a major third which is not really usable in a minor context sounds pretty annoying there okay so that's the base of this lesson we are going to try and form these intervals 9 11 13 but not in the traditional way of you know mugging up the notes writing it in thirds and then somehow knocking off a few and struggling to play it on our instrument because especially on instruments like the guitar you don't have that many strings and more importantly you don't have that many fingers because one finger is already holding the guitar the thumb it's clutching so you just have four fingers to end up playing well six note chord so we have to figure out ways to knock off a few less important notes and voice the chords in a way to bring out the flavor and not have a very clashing or dissonant sound so before we get started with the five methods it'll be awesome if you can consider subscribing to our channel and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications also my notes are available on our patreon channel for just 5 bucks a month let's get cracking so the first approach would be just form a fifth chord in the right hand or in the upper register so i'm just taking c fifth actually c fifth is boring let's take d fifth that's d a d root position or a d a first inversion now while you do this experiment in the left hand first off with just notes with just uh, random notes not random any of the 12 notes and see how this d fifth chord vibes with the bottom with the bass so if i just play d plain and simple if i play a plain and simple but it it's now forming a sus4 sound because the a is in the bass while d it's now forming a very calm perfect fifth kind of sound while a is now forming a very u2 suspended sound okay but if i take b flat completely changes the context and if i look at the intervals this is sort of like a way to play b flat major 7th isn't it because i have the major 7 there and i have the major 3rd what about a flat pretty dissonant maybe unusable f sharp is a very nice d major over f sharp sound that's a very f major 6th kind of sound that's a very e7 sus4 kind of sound it's a very with e flat in the bass that's a very e major 7 sound but with a flat 5 or a lydian sound if you think about it then c sharp is a bit unusable yeah a lot of them are usable and they some are very plain and simple like d maybe a but e forms a very e minor 7th kind of sound b flat major 7 so you see where i'm going i'm already getting a lot of these extensions seventh intervals but now what if i want to form ninths and elevenths and thirteenths what you do is in alongside this bass note you can start adding one more to the party so let's say i play a seventh flat for everything already a very d seventh kind of sound if i do c There we go. So C with a flat seven, that's B flat, is now presenting these intervals in a completely different uh, avatar. You have D, which is now going to be your nine. A, which will be your thirteen. Okay. What about uh, B? So that's a very minor seventh kind of sound. In fact, that is B minor seven, pretty much. Uh, that's a b flat 7th with that major 7th up there so it's a bit dissonant that's an a7 sus4 bit dissonant <clears throat> right you get your 9th there but with the f sharp now and that flat 7 you have a d which is sounding very 13th like or like a 6th with the minor 7th this is already very interesting right you have an f with a flat 7 and a 13th up with the d uh e 
with the eleventh and the flat seven in there. You get the idea. Now you don't have to just stack up the flat seven. You can also do sixths and see where that takes you. No. And it doesn't have to only form ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth traditionally formed chords. It can also form very interestingly voiced major or minor chords. So it's just a nice exploration of harmony where you just take a fifth chord in the right hand and just see where it goes with respect to the bass register. The bass register is going to be creative and drive the. the harmonic movement while the right hand is is going to hold its ground okay so that is one easy way to get colorful intervals or colorful chords with just a fifth chord on the on the top and then exploration of the bass in the left hand alongside maybe a flat 7 to instantly give you those 9th 11th and 13th extensions so another easy way easy sounding and easy to play also would be take a a seventh chord for example a dominant seventh i'm going to take c seventh playing c in my bass in the right hand okay in the left hand i just want to play c that's pretty much enough in the right hand i will have two voicing strategies either with a 3 and a 7 that's e and a b flat or else i'll go 7 flat and 3 B flat E, so three seven flat seven flat three. Okay, now once you are here, you've played it with let's say these two fingers or these two fingers. It begs to it asks the question, what next? Because these other three fingers in this case can do another can do more, isn't it? So maybe I can stack up the ninth in this particular voicing. Where's my ninth? With respect to C, ninth is same as two. That'll be D. So I get one nice block of a C ninth sound. It's very easy to change that now. I can now make it a flat nine, just by flattening the nine. It's very visually there, and that's a sharp nine. So in the three seven voicing, I can access on the top register nine, flat nine. and the sharp 9 i can do this even with a major extension major 9th you can do it even with a minor minor 7th with a 9 minor major minor major 9th i guess you could call it that there we go and then that's your minor 9th and then you can go a step ahead You can play the voicing of with a nine. Now you have a seven flat in there already. Maybe you can play the seven flat down below in the left hand because the left hand is just doing one note, and then change the seven flat probably to a thirteen. You get an even more jazzy sound. You can make maybe make the thirteen into a flat thirteen. Okay. So that's a nine. with an augmented augmented fifth or a sharp 13 okay so that's with the 3 7 voicing what options arise when we have the 7 3 voicing so back to c this is my 7 flat this is my 3 again there are fingers free at least two of them so what can i start 13 flat 13 So based on the three and seven flat arrangement, whether it's three seven or seven three, you can add other extensions, one of the other extensions, and it gives you a very clean sound as well, very usable, right? Uh, or maybe here, you have two flavors. So if you're doing it with a blues context. You can kind of toggle it. This is a three seven with the nine, and starting off with a seven flat, and then extending with the thirteen. And maybe what happens with the five chord? 
or you can do anything with the five. That's a flat nine for the F. Works well for blues. So you practice this for blues. I think I am drifting. I should probably do another video exploring this voicing and playing some blues. We have a lot of blues lessons, so do check them. We leave a we leave a playlist in the description where you can learn some blues and rock and roll as well. Okay, so that's the three seven voicing method. Another very easy method, which actually was the first way I found uh, a survival instinct to to get these. you know fancy sounds out there the 9 11 and 13 it's to just take what we already know triads major and minor but with a different bass what do we call those slash chords so if you even take a seventh chord like let's say a b flat major seventh i want to form that chord you can think of b flat major seventh as a d minor with a b flat bass See, e flat major seventh would be G minor slash E flat. So essentially, you play a major third of that root up and play a minor chord. So that sounds a bit confusing, but it's very easy to visualize. So I want to form C major seventh right now. So I hit my C, go up a major third. You need to know your intervals. So major third from C is C D E, and play E minor. So play E minor upstairs. and you can play this in any inversion that's why i like the voicing options and the freedom of playing the notes and then just hold the c and it's c major 7 similarly e flat major 7 upper major 3 play g minor so you can extend this with the 9 11 and 13 sound so let's say i want to form a c 9th sound okay so i'll whack my c I have my nine there, but remember ninth comes with the seven flat. So maybe I should play a B flat and close it out. What triad has both B flat and D? G minor. There we go. So what's the golden strategy of playing a ninth chord uh, in this minor kind of voicing? You take any root out there, go to its fifth. and you definitely get a flat 7 and you get a ninth okay and if you want a more dominant sound uh, or a dominant flavor then you need a major third in there right so then you can probably look at taking again go back to c and play a a flat 7 or a tone downs major so that's a 9 and 11 in there use the lot in your musicals your ballads and a lot of gospel songs use a lot to modulate from scale to scale so it gives you a very very good template a very good platform to kind of do a, a good vocal run or a quick lick and then go to the next chord so it's a good dominant sound okay um you can also say okay i want a 9 but with a sharp 11 so i can do c and what chord what triad has a 9 and a sharp 11 so that would be d major up top with a c bass so d slash c don't get confused with slash chords d slash c basically means d is the triad up there with c being its bass so if you're in a band and if you have two members let's say a ukulele player and a bass player the ukulele player can play d major while the bass player has to then do c to get you that lydian sound or else you can play b flat upstairs and then a c downstairs that's b flat slash c okay you can even do the g minor Now with this method each triad over the different bass note will give you a different sound so you don't just have one ninth sound you have quite a few there we go you have that one so basically any triad which has that d in there see you can even do d minor over c 
and so on and so forth right so the options are pretty endless you wherein you take a chord and figure out okay i want that now let's say you want a flat 9 there we go so i my attention is shifting towards that d uh, d flat right or i want a raised 9 so what do we do there uh, so i want that somehow okay so you can have slash chords which can give you this flavor let's just try you know sharp 11 will be a d major slash c that works pretty well um 11th 7 flat voicing major chord up there and then a 13th you can play a d minor alongside a c but try to add the flat 7 here if you can so these are some ways to do it you can also form very interesting uh, extensions or very interesting jazzy sounds with poly chord so just to take this a bit further a slash chord is a triad with another uh, note as base a poly chord something like uh, maybe if i take a g minor in my right hand and then go down a tone that's to f major so i'm playing f major and a g minor together okay you get a very minor 7th add 9 and 11 so we just call it g minor 11 so what's the formula to build any neo soulish 11th chord voicing you take a minor chord maybe c minor go down a tone in this case c down a tone is two steps that's down to b flat and you get a nice wash of a minor 11th very ambient dreamy kind of sound so that's a poly chord you have one on the top you have one triad up there you have one more triad down there or if you're arranging for uh, for two instruments one instrument could play this triad while the other instrument could play the other triad so the approach is also very important it's not only easy to play it's also interesting to compose with because you have different perspectives so two more ways to formulate and compose music using the jazz intervals 9 11 and 13 you can do what's called a squatel voicing which is pretty simple instead of playing triads which is thirds like c e g which is e is the third of c g is the third of e you can instead form chords using fourths instead of thirds so instead of playing thirds c thir- c is third is e e is third is g i can do c is fourth perfect fourth is f what is f's perfect fourth that's b flat right already you'll observe this is a lot more ambiguous or unclear or not obvious not as obvious as the major sound the major sounds very stable so does a minor but when you play the quartal which is a stack of two perfect fourths well you have other quartals as well you have a perfect fourth and an augmented fourth a perfect four and a raised four you could also have a sharp 4 and then a perfect 4 so we call this a c sharp 4q while this is just c q c quartal okay okay this is plus 7 okay there we go so there are three quartals one is two perfect fourths perfect augmented augmented perfect so this as you as you're clearly seeing you can build a lot of your extensions this way but the way i like to use it is if you take a scale like maybe the c dorian which has a minor third and a flat 7 e flat and b flat if you just form scalar quartal chords or diatonic quartal chords if that's a term you can go see already If this was a C minor seventh, you're getting the minor seventh there, and you're getting the eleventh. You already got a decent voicing. Now, if you go, there we go. You have a ninth, 
very ninth sound in there and then you have a 13th in there and a 9th then you can have your 11th with the next one which is your 11th flat 7 and a, a minor third okay and then see my bass is the dominant uh, root and the dominant 7th what's happening here perfect 5th root 11th again very spicy that's because you have your 6th or your 13th in this context and your 9th and your 5th and then finally your 7 there we go you can't play an E that's out of scale very spicy because of the 13th so you can kind of run with this so if your band let's say is has written C minor chord uh, in the chord charts you can kind of you can make a line with quartal voicings so you can have not only one uh, interesting spicy extension sound you can have a, a variety of them for the price of just one chord because at that time it's just C, C, C minor and similarly if you take maybe the major scale you can start forming quartals from the major It's also a very unique sound. You don't find it in a lot of conventional music out there, pop, rock or whichever genre. It is a very unique sound. Even I learned it very recently. So another thing which I'd like to point out before we conclude is now we've looked at quartal. Earlier we looked at slash chords which are triads, thirds. Quartal is fourths. What's the next? Quintal which is fives or fifths. So if you stack up maybe two perfect fifths and have some fun with that. Two perfect fifths remember is not to be confused with a fifth chord which we saw in the beginning. Which is that. This is root perfect fifth and perfect fourth upstairs up, up there. There we go. Okay. At the word go this is already a ninth sound you know. Because you're adding that ninth interval and you can play around. And just move and see where it goes, you know. You can even you can even voice it in your left hand. Sounds like that. So even if I just do nines, quintal voicing allows you to play a lot more deeper on your instrument. And the 10 is very close to the 9, so you can make that into a major. Okay, so if you have a a 7 flat already set up for you here you can start experimenting check that out you get a very open sound not like those closed slash chord options which I showed you so what's happening here this is an E flat 7th or an E flat dominant 7th I'm adding the 9th I'm adding the 13th and then the major third. Let's have some more fun. And a good strategy to a good strategy to check this out is to move around the circle of fifths, you know. So you're on F, then experiment with the next one in the circle, which is B flat. That also seems to sound pretty interesting. Then experiment with the next one. E flat and you're moving in which direction now F B flat E flat A flat you're moving in the 
reverse direction of the circle okay so if you take uh, we we did b flat already okay again that has that 13th in there it has a lot in here actually a 9 and a 13 uh you can do uh, maybe a flat now maybe d flat i guess you get the idea so you can kind of stack up things This this will give you a very ambient sound, which is why I like using it a lot in the left or in the bass register, and very open-ended sound. That's closed because the tenth, a bit unclear. You can also kind of now that you've got a ninth, you can focus on the other elements. Like the seven flat, minor uh, third. It's a good kind of base to improvise on because it's very colorful. It's not like a fifth chord or a clear major chord. It's a bit open ended. Okay, that's quintal voicing. Okay, guys. So we've covered five ways to form, play, and hopefully compose and improvise with the ninth, eleventh, and the thirteenth extensions alongside their um, flats and sharps, like flat nine, sharp nine. a uh, sharp 11 flat 13 which is also known as sharp 5 the approaches are rather unique and give you different music as you keep exploring each we've looked at fifth chords we've looked at 3 7 voicing with an additional note we've looked at slash chords to first of all simplify it but then take it to town with its own unique flavor and then we looked at quartal voicing and quintal voicing which are things which even i am exploring and you know i'd love to do a few more videos so let us know in the comments uh, what you'd like to learn as well in the field of harmony theory uh, also let us know what you thought about the lesson and if you'd like to learn in a more structured way you can always consider doing a semester at our school head over to nathanielschool.com you will have a form somewhere there to fill and someone from our team can reach you and understand what your level is and figure out a a course which can suit you best based on your availability and flexible uh, and hours of day where you are available to learn right guys thanks a ton for watching the video don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications and to help supplement the learning my notes is available on the patreon page thanks again cheers